Autopilot is really impressive. It can do most of the driving for you, but it cannot do everything and certainly does not have full self-driving capability. Which means what you're seeing right now is not Autopilot. I'm just controlling Smart Summon from my phone in the passenger seat in an empty parking lot. Autopilot has limits. But with a name like Autopilot, that can be a bit confusing, as that may give you the impression that this feature can drive a car by itself, but that is simply not the case. Tesla's Autopilot is actually the namesake of Autopilot systems found on most commercial aircraft nowadays, but just like in Tesla cars, the aircraft version does not fly planes on its own. In the FAA's Advanced Avionics Handbook chapter on automated flight controls, it has this to say. While the Autopilot relieves you from manually manipulating the flight controls, you must maintain vigilance over the system to ensure it performs the intended functions and the aircraft remains within acceptable parameters of altitudes, airspeeds, and airspace limits. And similarly, Tesla's website says this about its autopilot system. Current autopilot features require active driver supervision and do not make the vehicle autonomous. And that can be a bit confusing because Tesla also has a feature that you're able to purchase called full self-driving. But spoiler alert, it does not do full self-driving, at least not yet. So what can Autopilot actually do? All Autopilot does is just combine two driver assistance features. The first being traffic aware cruise control, which you're probably used to seeing on most modern cars where it will speed up and slow down so it doesn't run into the car in front of you. And auto steer, which helps you steer and keeps you within your lane. And both of those features that make up Autopilot have come standard on every Tesla car since April of 2019. So any new Tesla you buy right now will have basic Autopilot included. So when I first got my car, Autopilot was actually disabled by default. So I actually had to go in here and turn that on. And that triggers this big, long warning, basically saying that Autopilot is still in beta. Auto steer is a driver assistance feature and does not make your vehicle autonomous. It also says auto steer is currently in beta, which we say to encourage a higher level of vigilance. And then if I want to enable it, I'll have to hit yes right here. So if autopilot is available, you'll see this little gray steering wheel on screen. And oftentimes this isn't available unless there is a clearly defined lane where you're driving. So since I'm on a clear lane right now, I can pull down twice on the right stock to enable autopilot, and you'll see these blue lane lines show up on the touchscreen, and the car will accelerate, brake, and stay centered in my lane without any intervention from me as the driver. Just like if you're using cruise control, as soon as you hit the brake, autopilot is disabled and I'm back in manual control of the vehicle. It can also be disabled by just pulling up once on the right stock. I think this is really the safest way to go so you're not risking slamming on your brakes while you're in traffic. There are also some non-standard ways to disable autopilot and most of these are there just so the system isn't abused or puts the driver in an unsafe situation. The one you'll encounter probably most often if you have driven autopilots is if you put any significant torque on the wheel. This is just there so that if it notices you're trying to take manual control, it automatically switches off and doesn't try to fight with you. And this wheel torque is actually how autopilot tells that you're paying attention. If it doesn't notice any slight torque on the wheel, not enough to overtake it, but just slight torque, it'll actually start to disable. So now I'm testing whether or not Autopilot is gonna kick off if I don't touch the steering wheel. This is the main way it tests to see if you are actually paying attention. So we've already got the warning there and it's gonna start beeping at me now that I need to take over. And it's beeping some more. And it's going to slow us all the way down and put on our hazards, actually. So there's some people coming. I didn't want to completely slow down to zero, but that appears to be what happens if you aren't going to keep your hands on the steering wheel. So now, if I try to re-enable autopilot, we'll see it's not available anymore. So it kind of puts you in an autopilot jail where you can't even enable it anymore. Now, I'm going to try unbuckling my seatbelt and see what happens now. Okay, so it, it yells at me immediately. So I've taken back over and I'm back to I'm back to good now. And I can put autopilot back on. So 
Autopilot essentially shuts off immediately if you take your seatbelt off. So as you can see, there are lots of safety features here to make sure you aren't abusing autopilot. And it clearly has its limits. It's not going to let you just walk around the cabin or get out of your seat and climb around in the car without overriding some of those safety features. And there's also some things that autopilot just straight up ignores or doesn't even see or pay attention to. Namely, any kind of stop sign or stoplight. It is not going to stop for any of those things if it sees them, at least on basic autopilot. I think the biggest thing I've noticed is anytime a car pulls out in front of you or there's a car stopped, completely stopped ahead of you, the car will kind of wait to the last minute and then slam on its brakes. I like to slow down a lot more smoothly, so I generally will just turn off autopilot if I see one of those kind of hazards up ahead. It does handle curves pretty well. It certainly does it way better than when I first got my car, but it does sometimes cut curves a little bit too short or doesn't stay completely centered when going around curves, especially if they're really tight. So sometimes I'll turn off autopilot in those situations as well. I actually tried it on one of these country roads where it's essentially a 90 degree turn and autopilot did attempt it, but cut it completely short and I ended up having to take over towards the end to straighten it out. So autopilot certainly has its limits and I think understanding that as a Tesla owner is very important, understanding what autopilot can handle and what it can't handle and being able to recognize situations ahead of time where autopilot just isn't gonna work properly. With that being said, I still use it basically every day. Anytime I'm driving my car, I'll flip on autopilot. I treat it like the tool that it is. It's extra eyes on the road for you so that you don't have to focus on speeding up or slowing down your car and steering your car and keeping it within the lane. You can focus on other hazards and try to mitigate those if they do arise when you are driving. But if you abuse that system and acts like it's just gonna drive the car by itself, that's when problems can arise and you're risk putting yourself in danger.